After beating up the Autel Evo 2 8K drone for about three weeks now, I think I finally figured out how to get the best picture possible from it. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about what Autel has screwed up on and what needs fixing. Oh, please, God, no! Nothing to see here, please! And now we discovered why. Autel is crushing their black so hard because it doesn't want you to see what is in the dark, dark shadows. Now having said that, there is no other way you should be operating this drone than in log mode. You must shoot everything that you can in log mode for the best picture possible. And I'm going to show you why. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to see how far we can push these drones and how to utilize them the best so you can get the maximum potential from these drones. All right, here we go. So here we're gonna run through the different picture modes that are on the Autel 8K. Um, what you're looking at here is the log picture mode. It's uh, kind of an overcast day, so you're not gonna see as dramatic of a picture change on this one as you do on the other ones. But right now I have sharpness down negative two. Let's take a look at standard profile, which is zeros across the board. Neutral profile, it just takes the sharpness down one notch. Landscape, it goes up on the sharpness one and up on the contrast one. So let's fiddle with the, the controller. So we're gonna bring the sharpness down for three. And that looks okay. Here's sharpness down and two. You can still see the uh, little floaty things in the air. Sharpness down on one. It is pretty much imperceptible. It's really hard to see. Sharpness at zero. And mainly what you're gonna see a difference here when the sharpness is between the leaves and the sky, you're gonna be adding sharpness there. Sharpness plus three. So generally the sharpness really almost does nothing when shooting in 8K. It's very, very hard to see. Let's see what um, we can do with the contrast. The contrast is one of the problems, but it's, uh, it's less of a problem on the log mode. But if you look at our waveform, each increment adjusts contrast by about 5% on the shadows and 5% on the highlights. So let's say 10%. And here we're definitely losing the detail on the bottom of the bridge. And we go up plus three. Actually, when you have full contrast up in the log profile, that's a pretty pleasant image. It's not too bad. Don't mind that at all. Let's mess with saturation. Now, putting saturation up plus two, there is no difference. Even if you pull up the vector scope, there's no difference. I don't think uh, I don't think the saturation is doing anything in log mode. I mean, maybe it is adjusting it by 10%, but it's not enough to bring the picture back. Looking at the vector scope, I don't see any change in picture when you're adjusting saturation while shooting in log mode. So sharpness down three, sharpness down two. I'm just gonna leave it at sharpness down two. That seems okay for me. Let's turn the log mode off. This is the standard profile. And now you see that I'm underexposed quite dramatically. Now, when you look here, um, I was a little bit underexposed in my log mode, but I am way underexposed in the standard profile. But let's look at it. Negative two contrast. You can see there that it adjusts the contrast, but we do not gain any picture detail whatsoever. Look underneath the bridge. So the built-in contrast controls when shooting in the standard picture profile provide you with absolutely nothing. Um, you can leave it at zero and fix it in post. Um, but if you bring it down, it's just introducing grays. Uh, it's lifting the, the entire floor, but it's not doing it where it adds any detail. When it adds, you know, an extra 10% of contrast, as you can see here, you get no extra detail. Look at our waveform or look at our histogram. It brings it up. And even though it brings it up, we have no extra detail under the bridge. If you play with it in 
Premiere's color control and reduce the contrast there. It does a much smarter contrast control than trying to adjust the contrast in the drone. All right, there's gonna be a slight resolution change here because I'm gonna show you what it looks like inside of Premiere when you're messing with the contrast and compare how contrast should be adjusted and how it currently is being adjusted within the drone. If you're gonna be adjusting the standard picture profile, um, don't adjust the color and saturation controls inside the drone. Might as well just leave them at default and then come into Premiere to do it. This is what it looks like when you adjust at negative three on the contrast right here. It just lifts this up. Um, it'd be five, 10, and 15. So that's 30% contrast reduction, but it's actually not doing anything. You can see the blacks are still clipping right here. If you set that at default, our blacks are still clipping right there, but you can adjust your contrast here. You see how it's not just adding gray to it? It's leaving the blacks down at the bottom and leaving our highlight there, that cloud, and then adjusting the contrast in the middle. So it's just a smarter way of doing it. And you can see the difference there. And that's the type of contrast adjustment that needs to be in the drone, but it is not. There's the default. To explain what uh, what it's doing inside the drone, it's basically, remember how I said it brought it up to about 15 on negative three? So that's 15% here, 15% there equals 30. Negative three is 30% contrast reduction. It's not actually doing that. It's just, just lifting the bottom up like that and then bringing the top down like that which is why the image looks so trash it does nothing why would anybody want that that's terrible so uh that's old school bad way of doing contrast reduction and uh, it's useless pointless and it should be taken out or fixed so let's get back out of premiere and look at what it does in the actual drone just to reiterate what i told you you can see it's still clipping the blacks even though they're lifted we're still clipping the whites a little bit, even though they are dropped down. So once again, do not bother adjusting the contrast in camera. It is just serving to destroy your image. Just leave it at zero and fix it in post. Now by default, the Autel drone crushes the blacks into oblivion. It crushes them to hide some of that sensor noise that we see when we are not properly exposed for our shadows. So negative three contrast. Yeah, our histogram looks okay, but it's a dirty, dirty lie. It's just lifting those blacks, but not adding any detail. We switch back to log. Look, look at all the detail we can see under the bridge. It's fantastic. You must shoot in log if you are using this drone. There is no other way you should be operating this drone than shooting in log. I know what you're saying. It's a super flat picture. It's, uh, it's very desaturated. But uh, download the LUT that I've included in the uh, description and it'll solve all your problems. Best of both worlds. Now I'm properly exposed here. So we got 10% below, 10% above. Gives us some headroom. If we bring down the contrast to negative one. Uh, and there's real, no real need to mess with the contrast in log mode either. If you're exposed properly, you're not gaining any extra detail in the highlights or the shadows because it's already a, uh, a very flat image. So it wouldn't hurt just to probably leave it at zero. But unlike shooting in the standard picture profile, this actually uh, does affect the image. But shooting in log, it's really flat, so don't even bother worrying about that. Let's leave it at zero. You have to shoot in log which is completely the opposite of what I was thinking when I first got it. However, if you want the best image out of it, you're gonna to have to shoot in log. Check this out. Here, I'm gonna test out the orbit function as well as shoot in log. We're gonna get the massive amount of shadows. We're nearing sunset. So we are very hot on the front end of this water tower. Let's zoom in. We're shooting in 8K, zoom into 4K. It looks pretty sharp. The image looks pretty clean. 
Our shadows look great. Drop my LUT on there and it makes it look pretty great, even at 8K. Let's zoom in. We're gonna have to take a better look at some of our shadows to make sure we're not getting any funkiness. The darkest shadow over here. Oh, okay. That's broken. No! Oh, please, God, no! Nothing to see here, please! And now we discovered why. Autel is crushing their black so hard because it doesn't want you to see what is in the dark, dark shadows. That's okay. If we expose properly, we can still work around that and get a way better image by shooting in log as long as we expose at the very top of the histogram. That means we're gonna expose it as bright as possible right before our whites clip. And the brightest part of this image is gonna be the front side of that water tower. But when we shoot in log, the back side of the water tower is still very well lit. And you can still see a lot of detail in the shadows back there without getting a whole bunch of goofy um, sensor pattern noise or anything like that. And when you're shooting with stuff in the foreground like this, man, that water tower looks sharp. It looks clean. I'm finally getting an image out of this that I really like. We're only clipping a little bit on that specular highlight, but man, the detail. You can see every little speck of dirt and bird poop on this. And shooting in log, we can really mess with the color grade. If I want it to be saturated, I'll make that sky saturated, make that, that orange the way it was originally colored. I can really play with it. And there's the gimbal tilt. It can tilt up to 30% up. Now we do get a, we get a tiny bit of the, the prop in the, uh, in the top of the frame there. Nothing to be worried about. And the sun flare, look, we got the sun uh, and we're seeing the shadow side of the water tower. It's nicely exposed. It looks beautiful. It can be graded easily. Now let's zoom in to the 4K and see what the image looks like. Wait, wait let's go back, go back, go back. You see that? <laughs> you can see a perfect airplane in the sky. Anyways, zooming in on some of these antennas. If you're in inspection work and using this 8K sensor, look at that. You can see everything. That is fantastic. Let's take a really close look at the codec. If we zoom in real tight, you can start to see a couple of the patterns repeating. That's due to the H.265. DJI does that. If you look in the background, oh, the image doesn't look good, but we're zoomed in way far, so we're not going to look too closely at that. The detail on the stuff that's in the foreground is spectacular. It's kind of a limitation of the low bit rate. Um, the simple textures and the simple lines look absolutely stellar. It gets a little dicey when you zoom into some of the tree textures. Wait, look at this. I have a really clean shot of the water tower and it's, it's kind of unique in the area. There's, well, <laughs> there's a hundred million water towers in Texas and it is very flat in this part of town. But the orbit feature, rock solid. I really, really like the orbit feature. It's hanging on tight and um, this is great. So we can add my LUT and add a film texture to it. A lot of my films look like this. This is a film convert, and it makes it look really nice for the image. Notice how there's your log profile. There's my LUT applied. Log profile, LUT applied. And the really weird thing about this is you can change to the standard color profile without stopping recording. Let's take a look at what Autel's standard color profile looks like. There should be something between log and their standard profile. And you cannot make it yourself with their terrible, terrible, terrible built-in tools. They just crush the blacks into oblivion. The contrast is unbelievably high, and that's at default zero. The color control tools are garbage on the drone. And the only way you should be shooting in this drone is with the log profile. Now the, the built-in high contrast standard profile that the drone has I guess it's fine, but it's unbelievably contrasty, and you can't fix that. Maybe they did this to hide some of that goofy sensor noise if it's not exposed properly. Look at the backside of this tower. It's super dark. It's not a pleasing image. And if you try to color correct it after the fact, you're going to get all sorts of color artifacts. Now I'm still on orbit. It's still spinning in a circle here. So it allows me to change the color profiles 
on the fly without even stopping recording. So it's great that it doesn't have to do anything extra special. However, it doesn't have to do anything extra special to make that log profile work. They just need to add a couple of other options. And if they want, I can send them my LUT and they can build it into the drone and call it a wide dynamic range to make this much more user friendly. The focus is rock solid. It's not searching for focus. Uh, DJI drones sometimes do search for focus when I refocus. This one is pretty good. But the detail is still there. It's just way too contrasty. This is something they absolutely have to fix. They need a middle ground between log and their none color profile. And I absolutely think it needs to be done on the next go. If we shoot in log, miraculously all of our shadow detail reappears and all you gotta do is drop a decent LUT on there. Now DJI has LUTs on their website, but they're super stylistic and they're not gonna really do you much good. If you don't have a good LUT for shooting in log, just download the one I made. Um, it should get you most of the way there. You might need to tweak it depending on how you shot your scene, how you exposed for your scene. But when shooting in log, expose this way, as bright as possible without blowing out your highlights. Now here's the problem I have. If you stop the orbit mode and switch to a different mode, the, uh, the options for selecting intelligent photo wipes out your entire view frame, which is super scary. I wish they would just make it uh, half the screen or a side of the screen. So now we're just gonna do manual flight. And my third complaint is when shooting in manual, and any autel pilot will tell you this, that the panning, the panning on the camera, on the drone, or the yaw, if you want to call it the yaw, is far, 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 far too touchy. Let's look at our pavilion over here, shooting in, shooting in log again. Um, I just exposed to my eye. It looks really well exposed. I have it on precision flight this time, and I'm really satisfied with how the precision flight is working. It's still much faster than DJI's precision flight, but it's usable. You gotta be uh, good at playing video games or I've been flying drones for a while to really get the shots that you want, but at least now it's usable. So here I threw my LUT on there and it looks pretty good with my LUT. And then I switched it over to uh, taking it off a log into the standard color profile. And again, it's just so contrasting. You can forget about your shadow detail. Look at up here in the top right, it's gone just crushes everything. You lose all detail. Try to expose for the whole scene, which I'm gonna do by raising the shutter. That would be exposed correctly for the scene, but our highlights are totally gone. The only way you're gonna get good image out of it is by shooting in, shooting in log and just knowing a little bit how to get that color corrected. Now, if you made it this far, congratulations, but hopefully you learned a little bit more about how to properly color your images and how to properly expose your picture. Feel free to subscribe if you thought this was valuable and hit that bell notification so you can see me on the next one. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much.